business was to prepare the way of the Lord. With signs of human settlement dating back at least 10,000 years, the Holy Land is fertile ground for archaeologists. Hardly a month seems to go by without construction workers building a new road or housing development stumbling upon some evocative evidence of a past civilization. The past year was no exception. In recent times, archaeologists have made several significant discoveries, including the face of Jesus Christ, the visage of an ancient king, and the possible rediscovery of a long-lost kingdom. So in today's video, we'll look at some ancient Bible discoveries that have revealed some hidden messages. Christianity is one of the most widespread religions in the world. It has a large number of adherents and believers, and even those who do not necessarily strictly adhere to the religion, it still has significant and essential implications in the history of our world. And what is a characteristic shared by all of the world's major religions? A holy text, usually in the form of a large book that contains and explains the religion's principles and doctrines, laws that are said to have come from no ordinary man but disciples of God or God himself. For Christians, that book is the Bible. There are many interpretations, but the core teachings are the same. The stories it contains act as moral compasses or pathways to the universal truth that all humans seek to varying degrees. The significance of this sacred text is what caused the alarming and exciting news to come out of Nicosia, Cyprus, where authorities reported the discovery of a manuscript that is suspected to be an extremely old version of the Bible. Authorities in northern Cyprus believe this to be a Bible written in Syriac, a dialect of the language Jesus spoke as his native tongue. The manuscript was discovered during a police raid on suspected antiquity smugglers. During a hearing in court, Turkish Cypriot police testified that they believed the manuscript could be anywhere between 1,500 and 2,000 years old. According to photographs that were made available, the manuscript contains passages from the Bible that are written in gold lettering on vellum and are only loosely strung together. On one page is a drawing of a tree, and on the next page is Syriac script written across eight lines. However, there was disagreement amongst the specialists regarding the origin of the manuscript and whether or not it was an original, which would make it extremely valuable, or a forgery. The use of gold lettering on the manuscript led some specialists to believe that its age was likely to be later than 2,000 years. According to leading expert Peter Williams, who is the warden of Tyndale House at the University of Cambridge, speaking to media reporters he stated, I'd suspect that it is most likely to be less than 1,000 years old. The relic was taken into custody by Turkish Cypriot authorities, and there are currently nine people being held in custody pending further investigations. According to what they said, additional people are being looked for in connection with the find. The investigation led to the discovery of dynamite in addition to a prayer statue and a stone carving of Jesus, both of which were thought to have originated from a church in the Turkish-held portion of the north. The individuals who were detained have been charged with illegal excavations, possession of explosives and trafficking in antiquities, according to the police. Syriac is a dialect of Aramaic, Jesus' native tongue, that was once widely spoken throughout the Middle East and Central Asia. It is still practiced in the Syrian Orthodox Church in India and is used in countries around the world where there are Syrian Christians. Maronite Christians in Cyprus continue to speak Aramaic at their religious gatherings and ceremonies. One very likely source of the manuscript could be the Tur Abdin area of Turkey, where there is still a Syriac-speaking community, said Charlotte Rouchet, professor of late antique and Byzantine studies at King's College London. It's very common for people to tell stories about the age of certain manuscripts. One example of this would be the Yonan Codex, which has been carbon dated to the 12th century, but has been passed off as being from an earlier time. J.F. Coakley, a manuscript specialist at the University of Cambridge Library and a fellow of Wolfson College, suggested that the book could have been written quite a bit later after conducting additional research on photographs of the book. However, in order to determine this with absolute certainty, additional research will be required. In another archaeological dig, a new set of Dead Sea Scrolls, ancient fragments of biblical text dating back almost 2,000 years and thought to have been hidden during a Jewish revolt against Rome, have been found in an Israeli desert. 
the Israel Antiquities Authority reported that a four-year archaeological expedition unearthed parts of the book of the twelve minor prophets, including the books of Zechariah and Nahum. It was the first discovery of its kind in 60 years. In addition, the skeleton of a 6,000-year-old child who had been partially mummified was discovered, as was a basket that was 10,500 years old and which Israeli authorities believe may be the oldest in the world. A CT scan revealed that the child was between the ages of 6 and 12, with skin, tendons and even hair partially preserved. Among the recovered texts, which are all in Greek, is Nahum 156, which says, the mountains quake because of him, and the hills melt. The earth heaves before him, the world and all that dwell therein. Who can stand before his wrath? Who can resist his fury? His anger pours out like fire, and rocks are shattered because of him. According to the authorities, these words differ slightly from other Bible versions, offering rare light on how the biblical text evolved over time from its original form. The original Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered in 1947 by a Bedouin shepherd in the same area, and they are regarded as one of the most important archaeological findings of the 20th century. However, biblical academics debate on their authorship. The majority of those scrolls are housed in the Israel Museum in Jerusalem. However, Jordan and the Palestinian Authority have also claimed ownership. Qumran in the West Bank, where the first scrolls were discovered, is part of land conquered by Israel in the 1967 war and would be part of a future Palestinian state. It is very exciting to see these finds and expose them to the public, finds which shed great light on our history, Avi Cohen, CEO of the Ministry of Jerusalem and Heritage said. These finds are not just important to our own cultural heritage, but to that of the entire world. Other items include a cache of coins with Jewish symbols like as a harp and a date palm. Arrowheads and spearheads, woven fabric, sandals and lice combs are also assumed to date from the conclusion of the Bar Kokhba revolt, 132 to 136 AD, in which Jews battled against Roman rule in Judea. The valuables were discovered in the Judean desert, in a cave known as the Cave of Horror by the Antiquities Authority. Because of the area's distinct dry climate, documents discovered there have preserved in extremely good shape. Researchers had to rappel down a perilous cliff face to reach the cave mouth, which is 260 feet below a cliff top and surrounded by gorges on either side, using methods more akin to a Hollywood movie than an archaeological study. Drones were also employed to survey tricky cave areas. The authorities were quick to warn out that access to the cave is prohibited for safety reasons. The extraordinary finds were uncovered during an Israeli project to avoid looting in the Holy Land, which experts believe has been a continual threat to unknown antiquities since the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Director of the Antiquities Authority, Israel Hasson, who spearheaded the effort, urged the Israeli government to do more to safeguard future unearthed artifacts. According to the Israel Antiquities Authority, 600 caves were mapped using drones and advanced survey technologies. Aside from the recent reported discovery, approximately 20 caves may still contain important artefacts. The fragments contain very small amounts of Old Testament text, but they have something to offer scholars. Professor Fidanzio noted that they show textual fluidity, or when the biblical text was not yet stable or fixed. It was only later that the scriptures were canonized, fixed, and then handed down to the present day with great fidelity. He claims that the Cave of Horror scroll can assist scholars in understanding a stage that led to the definitive text. But that's not all. In 2021, archaeologists working on the eastern slopes of the city of David discovered a significant stretch of a first temple period fortification wall that stood during the Babylonian invasion in the 6th century BCE. This stretch of wall was preserved to a length of 40 meters and is 3 meters tall and 5 meters wide. A number of significant small finds, including administrative stamps, were discovered beneath the wall. Archaeologists have yet to establish a definitive date for the wall's construction, but they believe it was built between the late 8th and early 7th centuries BCE. This would fit neatly into the biblical account of King Hezekiah's siege preparations and strengthening of Jerusalem's wall in anticipation of an attack by King Sennacherib and the Assyrian army, 2 Chronicles 32.5. The discovery of this stretch of wall completes a much longer fortification line. Separate lengths of this wall had previously been discovered on either end, to the east and south of the city. 
The total length of Jerusalem's overall southeastern fortification can now be seen to its full combined length of 200 meters thanks to the discovery of this in-between section of wall. Now let's hear your thoughts about these discoveries in the comments down below.